Hello. Welcome to the pre-mom um, topic of endometriosis today. Um, I've got a few Hello. questions that Welcome I can go through first. And then if you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot some questions to me. Um, this is my first time going live on Facebook on my laptop, so bear with me. I might know my topics, but I'm not always technologically savvy. So we'll see if I can see everything okay. All right, so we're talking about endometriosis today. Um, endometriosis is really complicated. Uh, because it can mean some things to some people and other things to others. So it's almost not quite the same with everybody. So first, let's start with um, what endometriosis is, right? Endometriosis is basically your uterine lining growing anywhere else but in the uterine cavity. How does that happen? Well, those little special cells that grow a nice thick lining every month they can escape from the uterine cavity, right? Especially out the tubes. And when they do, they can land wherever they like. They can land on the outside of the bladder. They can land on the outside of the uterus. They can land on the intestines. They can land on the outside of an ovary. They can land wherever they want. And now this endometrial tissue that has escaped is going to behave the only way it knows how and that is it grows thicker in the first two weeks. And then eventually, after a couple of more weeks of not finding out you're pregnant, you shed that lining. So the same thing happens with these endometrial deposits. Um, now, certainly there are surgeries that you can get. People go in and they have, they'll say, lasers off their endometrial tissue. And, and that will certainly alleviate a lot of the symptoms, but not forever, generally. Why? Because you have a period every month and these little endometrial cell tissue can escape every month as well. And certainly as it builds up over time and gets heavier and thicker, that's when you start to become more symptomatic. So that's why there really is, it's kind of like when we talk about PCOS or things like that, there really is no cure type of thing. If you've got endometriosis, then you've got endometriosis. Um, usually the biggest symptom of how do I know if I have it is painful periods. I mean, really painful periods, not just I get a little crampy, but the kind of painful periods where, you know, you've got to live with the heating pad for a few days, or sometimes you even have to miss work or miss social gatherings, or, you know, you're fine. You're always taking the pain relievers for it and that kind of thing. And obviously every month this happens. That tends to be your first symptom that you have endometriosis. Social um, again, there are treatments for it. Now, the treatments aren't always conducive to trying to get pregnant. And if you think about it, based on what I just explained, that endometriosis is just endometrial tissue in places it's not supposed to. And again, when you get that period, you know, that, though, that tissue that is elsewhere in your abdominal cavity will also shed and cause that, that you know, great discomfort. So there are treatments that basically involve not growing an endometrial lining, you know, or, or staving off periods. So Lupron and, and, and again, sometimes even birth control pills or any of that birth, hormonal birth control treatment that staves off periods for, you know, months at a time. That will alleviate endometriosis. But of course, that's not conducive to getting pregnant. And that's what you and I are here to talk about today. So that's why now, now there is, of course, the treatment of surgery and getting it lasered off. Um, again, that will help. It doesn't solve the problem. And, it, and again, it won't interfere with you trying to get pregnant. Will it help you get pregnant? Not necessarily. Nothing's been shown like, oh, go get it lasered off and you get pregnant the next month kind of thing. Nothing like that. Um, I'm just looking at my list of questions. How serious is endometriosis? Well, there are certainly, and in, in another topic that comes up, there are stages of endometriosis from minimal stage one, all the way up to stage four. Certainly those that have stage three and stage four have it much more serious and are markedly more symptomatic. You know, pain during intercourse, pain during bowel movements, and certainly pain during um, periods. Again, I wish I could tell you there was a magic answer to solving endometriosis, uh, but generally there is not. 
Um, can I have a baby with endometriosis? Absolutely, you can have a baby. There's nothing wrong with your uterus. There's nothing wrong with your eggs just because you have endometriosis. Um, this is where endometriosis can get a little bit complicated because now not all, you know, reproductive endocrinologists or docs necessarily uh, subscribe to the idea that endometriosis might be your immune system, um, might kickstart this immune system into overdrive and not allow you to get pregnant. Uh, when I worked for uh, an IVF clinic for years and years, the doctor I worked for very much subscribed to the idea that endometriosis basically causes your immune system, if you will, to be hyperactive because it's busy cleaning up endometriosis all the time. And this immune system can cause recurrent pregnancy loss. So when you stop and think, well, you know, I've been told I have endometriosis or I think I might have endometriosis. Will it impact me getting pregnant? Generally, you don't have a problem getting pregnant. You have a problem staying pregnant. If this happens with you, it doesn't necessarily happen with everybody. Um, and again, not everybody believes in this. Um, now your next question should be, okay, well, what can I do about that? Well, again, I'm from the IVF world, but what, you know, there has to be treatments like interlipid infusions. Uh, doctors will run a gamut of uh, blood work to see if you have activated killer cells and this type of thing. Uh, and again, treatment is any of the immune treatments. Generally, these are not given when you're just trying to conceive on your own. Um, can I leave endometriosis untreated? How is it treated? Well, we talked about how it's treated. Again, if you're just trying to get away from the symptoms of endometriosis, then you're going to be looking for any of the medication treatments such as Lupron, et cetera, that will just save off you having periods and you won't have, you won't suffer from endometriosis as long as you don't have periods. Again, any of the long, um, the long-term birth control, the implants or the injections, or even certainly birth control pills can do that as well. Can I leave it untreated? Sure, you can leave it untreated. It's really mostly a comfort issue. Um, trying to conceive with endometriosis. Well, again, it's not so much that there's a secret that I can tell you that um, to conceive with endometriosis, you need to do A, B, and C. Um, you just, I would say you need to be aware that um, if you have, if you have endometriosis and you find that you're getting recurrent pregnancy loss, you're getting pregnant, but you're miscarrying. Then I would, and what is that? How many times? Two, three times when you know you have endometriosis, then I would definitely suggest seeking out a reproductive endocrinologist to find out and get some testing done. Uh, because again, we can't ignore the recurrent pregnancy loss. And again, I tend to go with recurrent pregnancy loss as, you know, having three miscarriages in a row, no life births in between type of thing. Uh, because of course, miscarriages are fairly common. And so you can't always look to, you know, blame them on endometriosis. So we don't want to jump to any conclusions yet. Um, what else about endometriosis? Um, I wish I could tell you that there definitely were, you know, special treatments and, and, and nutrition or, or things that you could do at home that solve the problem of endometriosis. Certainly there are other providers on here that are markedly more familiar with those type of things. So I'm going to kind of defer to that a little bit, just kind of go off of my experience with endometriosis. Um, but again, my experience with endometriosis is a lot of women have endometriosis, you know, about 10% of the ovulating women have endometriosis. And you know what? They get pregnant and have babies without a problem. So endometriosis tends to be more of an issue with just your daily life, meaning the discomfort that you undergo when you're having a period. It's again, my experience has been, it can be absolutely horrendous. Um, that's about all I guess I wanted to add into tell you a little bit about endometriosis today. Um, when it comes to a good question about success with endometriosis, like I said earlier, of course, most women with endometriosis have no problem getting pregnant and they do successfully get pregnant. Again, a lot of my experience has been in the IVF world um, where I have women who have to come to us with recurrent pregnancy loss. 
Um, again, with the thought being that maybe the immune system just kicks in too much. And, and, it, and while it's trying to clean up, if you will, all of the endometriosis, it may actually, you know, prevent this little foreign baby from implanting. And again, there are treatments. Um, intralipid infusion, which is an IV infusion done around your IVF. And again, it was very successful. Um, there was, uh, the pregnancy rate was basically the same as long as you did the treatment. Uh, but there were a lot of women who will tell you that they failed IVF um, or they, they didn't manage to conceive with perfectly good embryos. And that's when, again, the physician I worked for basically went into um, immune treatment for endometriosis. Yeah. All right. Uh, I wish you guys the best of luck. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to uh, hit me up on the Premom app. Um, when you click on more and you find providers, there's a whole gaggle of us there. Um, I'm there and I welcome you guys to any time to uh, schedule time with me. I, I can discuss any topics. Um, or I have gals that I just do, if you will, therapy with me. We just chat. We just talk sometimes. And that's just as important as anything else I can provide for you. All right. Um, I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.